we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I'm, I'm Dallin Kaufman. I'm uh, one of the sales directors at uh, Sound Vision Technologies, and we're grateful that you guys are all able to join us today for this webinar. Um, we have a, a good webinar plan for you guys. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, some of our new products, um, as well as at the end, the webinar, uh, just to give a little teaser, we'll be um, holding a little quiz, a Kahoot quiz, if anyone's ever done a Kahoot quiz before, and, uh, and then uh, the winner of that will be getting uh, some free product. Um, before we jump into the webinar portion, uh, so uh, we'll have Chase Harrison, who's our executive vice president, uh, the, uh, will be the one giving the presentation um, and, and talking about our new products. Uh, before we jump into that, though, Angela, actually, do you mind just as far as to give a little teaser as far as what's to come with, with some of the new products or some of the products that we'll be uh, giving out to the winner of the Kahoot quiz? Um, do you mind turning your camera on and, and showing the products now? And then maybe we can do so at the end as well. Yeah. Do you see? Awesome. So yeah, this is our, our Vessel A1 Home. It's a streaming amplifier. Uh, we'll be talking a little bit more about it uh, during the presentation. Um, and then also we've got two uh, CT4 uh, bookshelf speakers. Um, so we're, we're pretty excited uh, to be handing those out uh, today and, and grateful for all of you guys in, in joining us and um, so you can have a chance at, at uh, winning some free product at, at the end of the webinar. Uh, and, and we're grateful for uh, the StreakWave team um, in, in helping set up this, uh, this webinar and advertising and getting it out to, uh, to all of you guys so, so we can join and talk about our products. Um, so with, with that being said, uh, Chase, if you're good, I'll, I'll go ahead and turn the time over to you to, um, to give the presentation. Absolutely. Can you guys hear me okay? Thumbs up. Wonderful. Yep. Uh, thanks, everybody, for your time. I appreciate everyone taking the, the, the part of your day today and joining us for this presentation. Uh, obviously, as Dallas mentioned, we want to talk to you a little bit about some new products that both True Audio and Vessel uh, will be introducing in 2022. So uh, we're excited to be able to introduce these to you. Uh, before we get started, however, we, our marketing team's put together a little bit of a hype video. So uh, I'd like to actually jump over and share this with you. I'll be doing this through Zoom. So hopefully everyone's audio is on and can hear and see this, but we'll play this and we'll jump into the actual products and, and uh, get after it. So we'll start here. Boom. So hopefully like that, uh, our marketing team certainly likes to have some fun uh, with some of our new products, some of our existing products. Um, if you're just learning about True Audio or Sound Vision Technologies or Vessel for the first time, um, we, are, uh, we are based in Southern Utah. We have uh, kind of grown up servicing the system integrator, the professional. So uh, if you haven't heard of us before, like a JBL or a Bose or Sonos, that's probably why. But we're working uh, to make great strides to help kind of make the, our brands uh, more of a household name. So as you see us go into 2022, uh, we're, we're really investing uh, some resources, some capital into helping uh, raise brand awareness so that you, as you take us to your projects, obviously, both residential, commercial, uh, your customers a little more comfortable with us and our brands. So I just kind of give you an idea of some of the things we're, we're working on or have been doing uh, behind the scenes. But uh, jumping into the new, uh, the new products for, oh, let's skip past that. For True Audio, so we're gonna we're gonna uh, briefly go over the new True Audio products that you'll see roll out as early as Q1 2022, and then we'll jump in and do just a quick refresher on Vessel uh, to help everybody kind of you know uh, remember what Vessel is all about. And uh, so most of that actually content that we cover there will be in the quiz that Dal mentioned at the end of the presentation, and then we'll uh, be excited to obviously introduce what's coming on the Vessel horizon as well uh, as we get into next year. So. 
Uh, to start off with, we have uh, what you see on your screen, hopefully, is our new Elite Series. Uh, if you're familiar with the True Audio line at all, uh, we had a series by the name of the B23 series, and before that, it was also known as our Bad Boy series. Uh, the logo looked vaguely familiar, uh, similar to a, the Bentley logo, if you would, uh, but we are now uh, upgrading that entire product set into what we are now calling our Elite series. And uh, we're coming to the table with a couple of really cool features uh, and modifications to the product that ultimately is designed to uh, give your customer a better listening experience, give you a better installation experience, uh, and hit a, a, a pretty sweet uh, price point. So um, what you see on your screen is just the in-wall models. These can obviously go in ceiling as well if you'd like. Uh, we have some in-room in room models that uh, we will be launching at the end of December as well uh, that are designed to kind of go interchangeably with the, the in-wall models here. So a couple of uh, things worth mentioning here is they still have the good old six and a half inch red carbon fiber woofer that we're known for in some of our more uh, signature series or in this, in this scenario, our elite series. Uh, we also use our one inch titanium tweeter and uh, we've uh, shrunk our overall footprint by over 30%. Uh, these are quite a bit more uh, uh, small or petite, if you would, compared to the old B23 series. So as far as fitting in more of the more modern industrial or more, uh, more modern kind of design aesthetic uh, that we wanted to be able to do that. Uh, we also are getting rid of the old cloth grill. If you're familiar again with our B23 series that actually had a cloth grill, which some customers did like and appreciated, but uh, based on popular demand and, and kind of the way the market's moving is we wanted to give you uh, that magnetic grill, our ghost style grill, which completely covers the surface of the speaker without any real transition or border. Uh, that also gives you the ability to custom paint those grills so that you can now match them with whatever uh, room you are, are putting those into. Uh, you'll also, it's kind of hard to see in this particular picture, but uh, you'll notice there aren't any holes on the outside of the border of the, uh, the Elite Series uh, to screw down or to access the dog ears. Uh, the reason for that is we actually have done away with those and we're incorporating what is called our True Grip technology, which if you're familiar with uh, the True Audio line at all, you're familiar with that from our Ghost series, and that is our new toolless technology And that you, uh, once you have a hole cut out in your ceiling or in your wall, you can take a speaker just like the Elite series, you can put it in there, and those uh, four or 10, or excuse me, eight or 10 dog ears that you're, or little levers that you see currently kind of pointed up, uh, those actually will come out of the box armed, they'll be open, so they'll be kind of angled down into the speaker cavity a little bit. And the idea is once you put that in the, the cutout, you can start moving that uh, lever forward and the dog ears will snap, uh, swing out and snap down on the installation medium. So drywall, tiny groove, whatever you're installing it in. And then that'll come down, cinch into the medium and securely hold the speaker in place, uh, which essentially shaves all kinds of time off of, your, um, off of your installation time. So we're excited about the Elite Series. Uh, you can see the target retail there below. Uh, you can work with your street grade uh, sales team to get your uh, your trade pricing. Uh, once you see the difference between trade and retail, you'll see that uh, you'll have the uh, same strong margins that you're accustomed to in dealing with all of these Sound Vision technology brands. So uh, we will be shipping those as early as January 2022. So that's next month. Uh, we actually uh, just finishing up our production batch now, and we're going to bring a bunch of these over via air freight to get these in your hands as soon as possible. So. Uh, watch your emails and then the press releases will uh, we'll get word out as soon as these are ready to start shipping. Uh, next, we have our new select series uh, uh, subwoofers. These are a compact version of what is our larger, what we call our W12. This is in our, our most premium, most elite uh, category, what is known as our select series, and these are actually shipping now. Uh, this is a made in the United States product. Uh, the select series, if you have those customers that have a little bit stronger of a budget, uh, for their home theater or for their conference rooms or maybe their executive offices, that's where these particular products are going to uh, suit best. Uh, obviously, we have a number of different finishes available to you We do where we build these here actually in Utah and Southern Utah. Uh, we can pretty much do whatever you want with these and, and make them look just like you, whatever the project calls for. Uh, a couple of things that make this uh, SC12 unique is uh, a couple of orientation methodologies. You can see you can shape, uh, put it up on its side like in a diamond uh, format that you see here. You can also place it like a, tradi a traditional sub. Uh, featuring the 800 watt amplifier, this thing cranks. You can really uh, produce some, some strong low end, your, your boom boom in your project. Uh, it does have our onboard ice amplifier as well. So the same great amplifier that you're 
uh, perhaps familiar with in our select series W12 is also now available in the SE12. So um, super excited about this. And this is actually no shipping. So you can get your hands on these right away if you choose. Uh, the next is a uh, kind of an upgrade to our in-wall sub solutions. It's our Tremor sub. Uh, this will not be coming out until a little bit later into 2022, but uh, we, uh, we launched it and announced it uh, in September uh, at what would be uh, Cedia kind of around that same time frame. A um, couple of fun things about this is we are once again trying to make your lives easier uh, and your team's lives easier when they go out and install in-wall subs. Uh, first and foremost, this is complete, completely retrofitable, so you don't have to worry about doing anything during rough-in or pre-construction. Uh, number two, this, this picture doesn't do a great job, but you'll notice the dog ears on these on all four corners look a little bit unique in that there's actually almost two sets of dog ears or, uh, per corner. And essentially what our engineering team has done is in the event that you have cut in to the drywall or whatever you're installing the speaker in, if you happen to be butting up against uh, a stud or a TJI or what have you, uh, as you start to tighten that dog ear down, if one dog ear can't extend because it's bumping up against something, the other dog ear will then pop out and cinch down uh, at a completely different angle. So essentially guaranteeing you, you that every single time you install it, a new Tremor sub, that will be able to be installed uh, securely. You don't have to worry about now recutting the hole or moving it away from, from your joist. Uh, output was a huge goal for us here. We wanted to minimize our, our form factor in your projects and provide a much stronger output than any other sub in the market right now for a similar price point and form factor. And we've accomplished that with the Tremor sub. Uh, this is a passive sub, so you'll amplify it at the rack, meaning uh, you won't be able to plug power directly into it. You'll still need to run speaker cable to this from wherever your amplifier resides. Uh, also, you'll notice what we kind of called it the headrest. It's, a, it's an enhancer piece, um, but it's an optional accessory. That's what the, uh, that subwoofer there behind the other one that has kind of the headrest looking piece. Um, in the event that your customer wants a little bit more output or your project calls for more output, you can bolt that onto the top. It's still retrofitable. It slides up inside your wall cavity. Uh, that'll actually provide you an additional six dB, uh, which, is, which is saying something. It'll give you quite a bit more low end, even more than what the Tremor set, uh, offers by itself. So um, also, if you're familiar with our Trunami uh, subwoofer at all, uh, there was a cloth grill option and a metal grill option, and the, and the grill itself was a little, uh, is a little large. Uh, we're getting rid of that and we're doing um, a much more streamlined metal grill that again, you can paint uh, to match your project with the Tremor sub. Uh, one thing I'm gonna uh, mention here, we didn't uh, talk about it right as we launched, that uh, with such a large group, uh, like this, uh, it's a, it gets a little crazy when we're trying to do live Q&A. So if you wouldn't mind, uh, pop open your chat and start uh, throwing your questions in there. Um, I know uh, Dallin and Trevor from our team and Angie as well will will be watching those. So please throw that in there and I will address those too if I can as I see them pop out uh, as, we, as we continue. So don't hesitate to throw your questions in there. Uh, next on the on the true audio side, we have our new OP series. I am so excited about this product because it uh, is a long time coming. Our OP series, uh, as it stands, our 6.2 and our 8.2 is a good sounding speaker. Uh, it's a great sounding speaker actually, but it has been around for a long time. It's been it's been needing a facelift for a little bit a uh, little bit of time, and we are doing that with now our OP series, which you see on your screen. Our goal is to get this out uh, probably by the end of Q2, so we'll still have uh, some plenty of time in the outdoor season to be able to sell this. Um, there's a couple of really cool things we're building into the OP series uh, that will once again, streamline your installation process and actually improve your listening experience with your customers. Uh, so overall, we're changing the form factor entirely. So uh, you'll see that we are a much more streamlined form factor. We set off the wall quite a bit less than our traditional OP series. And even a lot of the competitors that are on the marketplace now, we've brought in our, we brought in Clips, Powers & Wilkins, Borgen Acoustics, Sonance, um, you name it from a surface mount perspective, we've brought those in trying to make sure that we outperform them acoustically and we look better than they do. And I'm, I'm pretty confident to say I think we've done that. Um, what we're doing to accomplish that is, is obviously you can, uh, we've shrunk the cavity, but to deal with a much smaller cavity and provide a stronger output, uh, uh, we've used what's called a passive radiator. And you'll see that kind of black race track looking driver on the top of the OP series. So that combined with the airspace, the, the cabinet that's on the wall and the woofer we're using, uh, the six and a half inch woofer, uh, it provides absolutely phenomenal outputs. It's a very full sound, sounds great. Um, and it sits off the wall um, very little compared to some of its competitors. 
uh, will be available in white and black. Another thing I'll mention is, is the quick installation technology that we're using on this as well. So we're kind of taking a page out of our uh, quick connect functionality in that uh, rather than have to haul that speaker up the ladder and then balance it on your shoulder and grab the speaker wire and try and terminate it while it's on your shoulder while on top of the ladder, uh, the bracket that you see on the back of this speaker actually detaches from the speaker and you can run that bracket up the ladder and terminate it to your single gain low voltage or high voltage box, depending on where you've dropped your speaker wire. And you can actually terminate your speaker wire right to that bracket. At that point, you then can take your speaker up and rather than have to balance it, you can take it and snap it right into the bracket. And as you're snapping it into the bracket, it actually makes a, a, a termination into the bracket that it, uh, includes your positive and negative conductor. So essentially at that point, you've made your termination, your speaker is now live. From there, you can actually articulate the speaker uh, up and down. Once you've got it exactly where you want, there's a little lever that you push on the bottom of the bracket, locks it in, and you're good to go. Uh, once again, trying to leverage that toolless technology that should save you a bunch of time on installation. So uh, more projects get done faster means more money in your product in your pocket. So super excited about this. Stay tuned. We'll have more and more information as we launch or approach our official launch date in Q2. Finally, on the true audio side, uh, we are taking what was our Ultrascape system, which is kind of an out of the box plug and play, um, you know, one size uh, available type system, and we're giving it a huge upgrade. Uh, it is, we're now taking it, uh, it's the name and adding the Ultrascape, the word Pro and Pro Plus to show that the, kind of the transition path from the legacy Ultrascape system. Uh, we are excited about this be, uh, for a number of reasons. It uh, performs better than our legacy Ultrascape system. Uh, it's easier to wire up uh, compared to our old Ultrascape system and is, uh, it fits very nicely in our landscape uh, family. It's kind of an entry level product. So uh, this Ultrascape Pro and Pro Plus system is designed again, kind of for smaller listening areas and somebody who just wants something out of the box that they can drive with really any two channel amplifier. So in our scenario, believe it or not, this system can run behind a Vessel A1X and still sound good. Uh, obviously, more power, the better if you can get it behind our 100 watt amplifier, our T100 or our D16, or perhaps somebody's got an old surround sound receiver that's got, you know, 75 watts or 100 watts per channel. That would be a great solution to drive our now Ultrascape Pro system. Uh, this is kind of going to be a, a all in one, you know, all the speakers and subs in one box or two boxes. So the idea being that you can have this kind of on your shelves ready to go for those uh, outdoor projects, both commercial and residential. Um, the sub itself can be installed in one of two ways. Here you see us using the 90 degree elbow. You can actually uh, flip that and install it vertically if you can't uh, uh, dig that large or wide of a hole. Um, and you can actually get this in a four and a six speaker package, um, just kind of as it stands. Uh, you can't subtract, uh, you can't go less than four and you can't go more than six. If you want to kind of have that flexibility, we have uh, our, our big landscape systems that you can still bring to the, bring to the table. Um, the retail pricing actually has been set. Our marketing team obviously has not been made aware of that, but uh, we will get that pushed out to ASAP. It's actually very aggressive. Um, there are some additional products out of the marketplace that are just like this uh, from a price perspective, but don't sound anywhere near as good. Uh, I think the Sonaray system by Sonance, um, Ambisonic has a system out there that's similar to this. Um, I believe Sounds by Vista has a system that's kind of like this, but uh, you'll be very happy once you see our retail pricing or trade pricing, the margin you'll make and the ease of installation. And then when you go head to head with the other systems, you'll see that we sound quite a bit better as, as you would expect. So super excited about this. We'll be launching uh, next uh, in first quarter. And you should see us start shipping this hopefully around the February timeframe. So we'll have the opportunity to catch all of the outdoor season uh, in North America. So uh, next, we're going to jump into Vessel. So hopefully most of this is review for everyone. But again, this is kind of where the meat and potatoes of our quiz is going to come. So I'm going to take some time to go through this. We'll finish up on the new uh, Vessel products that will be launching in 2022, and then we'll jump right into our quiz. So again, the X-Series, if you're, if you're just learning about Vessel for the first time, or maybe you've had some experience to it in the past, and now you're coming back to Vessel for the first time or uh, in a while, uh, we launched uh, our X series at the beginning of this year, which was the series that was supposed to include Amazon Alexa, the, the voice integration with Alexa. 
Uh, I say supposed to because it hasn't quite come yet. Amazon has a massive backlog for final certification on all of its products. We were supposed to literally have this, uh, I think, January, February of this year. And we are almost at the one year mark of when they should have given that to us. So we are being told literally any day now that the Alexa certification on this should be coming. Um, so as we go through the kind of the features, benefits, and specs, you'll see some mentions of Alexa. Um, just know that is coming. It's not officially launched yet. And, the, and if you have already been installing X-Series, um, know that it will just be a simple firmware uh, push and then Alexa will become available. Uh, you can then go in and set that up through the Vessel app and then uh, start using Vessel or Amazon in your projects. But um, on top of that, there's a couple of uh, really cool features that we built into the X-Series as well uh, that'll make your life easier. But before I dive into that, I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about kind of the backstory behind Vessel and we'll, we'll do this briefly in case this is for review for some of you. So um, about five, six years ago with Vessel, we just as a, again, a reminder, we, we looked at the competitive landscape and saw that streaming music, music audio was uh, very complicated. There was a lot of companies trying to do it and they were making uh, end users lives very difficult. Uh, they often would have to take whatever music streaming service uh, that they know and love and have to take those credentials and log into some sort of a third party app or platform. Uh, five or six years ago, that would be Sonos, Den and Heos, Control4, Crestron, and they would force you to live in that native app or live in their app. So um, if you're familiar with Spotify, for example, all the social media aspects that come with Spotify, that would be stripped out as you live in the Control4 app, the Crestron app, or the Sonos app. Uh, we looked at the competitive landscape and, and kind of how end users uh, would interface with their music, and they were always living in the, the music app they know and love, but the second they got home or second they got to their business, they were forced to leave that app and move into the Sonos app or the Den and Eos app or what have you. And our thought was, well, geez, if that's the case, it's going to make that far too complicated for your average user to then leverage these nice expensive speakers that potentially they put into their ceilings in their homes or their businesses or their nice amplifiers. And so for all those that have installed audio, wanted to install audio, it makes it very difficult or a harder story for them to tell uh, as they go out and obviously pitch our products to uh, the end users. So at that point, we said, well, we've got to change that. We need to make it so easy that the end users that are okay with listening to this, their cell phone on speaker out of their back pocket, would much rather just come in and now interface a vessel and their true audio speakers. And I'm happy to say about six years ago, we succeeded in doing that. Uh, and, and now I've simplified the process you see on your screen uh, and made it far, far easier to use. So customers no longer have to listen to this on speakerphone on their counter. Um, and we've done that by partnering with all the major streaming technology companies that exist right now, all the most well-known. Uh, those are Spotify Connect, uh, AirPlay, which is Apple's product, and then Chromecast built-in, which is Google's product or Alphabet, depending on how you refer to them. And uh, leveraging these three technologies, we've built processors into our vessel amplifiers that allow you to now use one of these three streaming architectures and soon to be fourth as soon as we get our Alexa certification and then uh, essentially take your uh, music app that you know and love continue to live in it and now send your music uh, effortlessly from whatever music app you know and love Apple Music, iHeartRadio, SiriusXM, Spotify, Pandora, YouTube Music, Deezer, Titles, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, etc cetera. and you can now push that into your project either in a single zone or multiple zones effortlessly making your uh, your customers more prone or allowing them to be more prone to use Vessel and, and uh, whatever speakers you've installed in their project. Essentially cutting out a lot of the extra steps that you saw two slides back and now they can take their phone, interact directly with a Vessel product and uh, push music right to their speakers. How this takes place to give you just a little bit of a, a snapshot is uh, I'm gonna play this. Hopefully this comes across okay on everyone's screen, but uh, this will give you an idea how this works. So here we're using Apple Music to show off AirPlay. Uh, we're actually in the Apple Music app. It doesn't have to be the Apple Music app. The nice thing about iPhones, iPads, and uh, MacBook Pros, MacBooks, is they all have AirPlay built into them. You can actually leverage AirPlay and stream whatever music or audio source on any of those devices that you would like and push it right to Vessel, similar to what you're seeing on your screen. So in this scenario, we've pulled up the song by IO and TO. It's a song called Rolex. We'll get that playing. 
and then you'll see there at the bottom of your screen, we're hitting the iPhone system capture. That's what we're using the system capture for the screen record, but we're just accessing the AirPlay menu. And here you can see a list of zones. So we've got the den, we've got the garage, we've got the kitchen, we've got the living room. And now I essentially am picking what zones I want to send that song Rolex into within my project. So here we pick the den in the garage. You'll notice those radio buttons are highlighted. And now at this point, we are streaming music into those two zones. Uh, next, we're going to show Pandora. You'll notice that we're still on an iPhone here, but we're going to be showing Google Cast. Uh, the nice thing about Google Cast and iPhones is you can also use Google Cast on iPhones uh, as well as iPads. As long as the music app supports it, which generally most do, you can see in Pandora uh, down here in the lower right hand corner, you'll see the AirPlay icon and the Chromecast or the Google Cast icon. Uh, those are both available on an iPhone. But here we're going to, for demonstration purposes, show the Google Cast uh, streaming app or target uh, architecture. So you notice we select Google Cast. Now we're going through and we're going to pick the zone that we want to play. In this case, it's the master bedroom. And we're off to the races using uh, Chromecast built in streaming Pandora. Finally, we're going to use the Spotify apps. The Spotify app is the only thing that uses Spotify Connect. But again, the nice thing about Spotify is they support all of the streaming architecture. So they support their own Spotify Connect. You can also use AirPlay. You can also use Chromecast built in. Hey Chase, sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. It appears that all, all of a sudden you have some kind of background white noise. Um, I don't know if there's, if you see anything that could be causing that. There, nope, I don't. Let me Not, see. No worries, we can just keep going. We can still hear you. Um, okay. There's just a little background noise. Okay. Hopefully, once we get past the slide, maybe it's the slide that's doing it. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> yep. So we're in the Spotify app at this point. You'll notice we hit the device available option there at the bottom of the screen. We're presented with all of the Spotify Connect options. So that is, that's essentially what Vessel does in a nutshell. Uh, it makes it really easy to use, really streamlined for, for your end users. I want to take just a brief second and touch on AirPlay 2. If you have any experience with AirPlay, especially the first generation of AirPlay, you may have had kind of a bad or a poor experience. Just wanted to mention with AirPlay 2, uh, it has significantly changed my perspective on AirPlay. I'm actually a big AirPlay fan now. Um, you can do things like group zones on the fly. Uh, you can, uh, the whole phone call, text message interrupting your audio stream, um, that goes away and just overall provides a much better user experience. So. Uh, next, I want to talk about the strength of voice and, and what we've built into the platform and some of the additional features that come with our partnership with Apple and Google and soon to be Alexa. Uh, first, obviously, because we are official certified partners with Apple, with Google, with Spotify and soon to be Amazon Alexa, that opens up the world to us for a number of different features and functionality. The biggest being that we have native integration with all of the voice assistants that they support and develop for. Uh, what that means, for example, with Google is um, out of the box, I can set Google uh, up in a zone, let's call it my kitchen. And as I go into that voice assistant, we'll call it Chase's Kitchen Google Mini. I can go in and say, listen, when you play music, rather than play out of yourself, I want you to play to my vessel zone called the kitchen, essentially becoming the default audio zone for that, for that uh, particular Google voice puck. So what, what that means is when I'm in my kitchen, maybe I'm doing the dishes or cooking, whatever, rather than have to get my phone to play music, I can just say, okay, Google, play music. Then it'll go and play, uh, grab one of my playlists and play it well, without me having to say anything else over my kitchen zone. I can also take that a step further and say, okay, Google, play Hotel California by the Eagles in the kitchen. Well, I don't even have to say kitchen. I could just leave it at Hotel California by the Eagles, and then it would play in the kitchen. From there, I can also, because if I've got multiple zones in my project, even though I'm using my kitchen Google mini, I can say, okay, Google play my party mix outside or my patio zone. And then it would send music out to my patio zone. So really clean, really native integration there. And that same functionality also works with Siri and soon to be Alexa. Um, the, the nice thing about the Siri is they take it a step further uh, and you can actually, because of that airplay two grouping zones on the fly, you can actually say, okay, Siri play music in my kitchen and my patio. 
uh, or occasionally uh, Siri play Hotel California by the Eagles in my kitchen and my patio or multiple zones and it works just, it works phenomenal. Um, also, because we are a certified Google partner, there's some additional things that you can do in the Google Home environment uh, to make Vessel a really uh, elegant solution for your audio needs. So for example, in your Google Home environment, you can actually set up routines. So in the event that maybe you've brought in lights that control through Google Home or some other scenario, when you set up a routine, for example, if you're uh, setting up audio for a cafe or restaurant, you know, they open up every day at 10 o'clock, they want to have a Latin playlist or they want to have um, an Indies Rock playlist play every morning at 10 a.m. in your Google Home app. You can go in and say, OK, every morning, 10 a.m., I want you to play this playlist on this vessel zone. And uh, within the routine, you can actually pick a vessel zone as the default zone. Another great feature about being a partner with Google. Um, we also can uh, inside of Google Home, you can set what are called Google Groups. Meaning if you've got multiple and uh, speaker zones in one project and you wanted to create, say, a party zone, that's maybe your kitchen, your master bedroom and your patio, or maybe it's the indoor and the outdoor dining area, you can group that together in a Google group and name that as a party zone or whatever have you. So um, again, that's right within the Google Home app. At Apple, uh, very similar. So you can also do groups. Uh, you can also use HomeKit uh, to kind of preset those. Um, you can also... Uh, do automations in there as well, like turn your music on, on and off certain times. And then you can, as I mentioned earlier, you can play your music. Um, you can tell Siri to play multiple zones at the same time. So very clean, very elegant uh, so integrations that allow you to um, uh, have a much easier, uh, better user experience. I just saw a question come up from uh, Pete. Can you do more than six zones in a single project? The answer to that is absolutely. Uh, you can actually mix and match zones um, or, and vessel units, so you'll see the three SKUs here in just a moment. Uh, we've got a six zone, a three zone, and a one zone. Uh, if you need nine zones, you could take a six and a three. If you need 10 zones, you could use all three SKUs. If you have 18 zones, you could take three of our vessel A6 units and, um, and put them in the same project. Uh, you can also use Google to navigate all three of those chassis or however many different zones you have. Um, AirPlay 2, the nice thing about that is it also spans multiple chassis. So if you have 18 zones, um, you can group zones through Google Home or AirPlay 2 um, on the fly. AirPlay 2 is only on the fly. Google Home, you have to set groups beforehand. Uh, but again, you can mix and match to your heart's content as long as the bandwidth is there within the project. So the only theoretical maximum is limited based on the number of the available bandwidth in that particular project. So Pete, thanks. That's a great, great question. So all the magic that is Vessel, all that streaming okay. technology, everything else uh, is going in, uh, going to be present in the three products. Keep I'm it to a half hour. Oh, there we go. Uh, so the next three products are shipping now. Well, when we get them back in stock, our A6X has actually just started to ship again uh, today. And then A1X and A3X will be back in stock by the end of the year. So, um, and I know Streakwave actually has some inventory already, so you can potentially grab that before it goes all the way. So. Uh, first, we have our single zone. It's our A1X. I like to call this kind of our Swiss Army knife of products uh, in the uh, Vessel family. The reason being is it can put audio in pretty much any project, be it commercial or residential. And I actually suggest guys to carry a handful of these on their trucks because you'd be surprised how often opportunities come up to add uh, audio zones to a project or fix a old audio projects. Um, and these are a low cost, solid solution uh, to, to offer to your customers. So uh, the nice thing about the A1X is uh, you can hardwire it with uh, Ethernet uh, for your uh, network connectivity, or you can actually connect it via Wi-Fi if you choose, uh, which gives you some additional flexibility and functionality in the project. Uh, if you can't always get a RJ45 or a Cat5, Cat6 to uh, where it is, whatever it is you need to house this. Also built into the A1 is a two-channel amplifier. It's uh, rated at 50 watts at 4 ohms and 35 at 8, 8 ohms which is more than enough power to basically drive any true audio uh, in ceiling or in wall speaker uh, short of some of our most signature products. Um, you don't have to use the built-in amplifier though. In the event that you've got an external amplifier like a surround sound processor for a theater or you're doing a, a commercial project and you're using a 70 volt amplifier and you need uh, some sort of a box to provide uh, the audio source, streaming audio source, the Vessel A1 can hook right into those amplifiers and be a great little solution for you. Um, as you look at the back of the, uh, the Vessel A1, you'll notice that we are giving you a subwoofer out. 
Uh, that's to uh, hook into some sort of a external a subwoofer amplifier, uh, but that it does have the ability to adjust the crossover right within the vessel app. Uh, the analog output and input, uh, the outputs uh, both for analog as well as digital coax and, and toss, uh, those are designed to loop out into those larger amplifiers. Your analog input as well as your optical and toss in, think if you have a CD player on a project or a record player or a media server or something that needs to physically plug in to the vessel to then be amplified to speakers, that's what those inputs are for. So um, another good solution would be is if somebody has a sound bar and they want to pipe TV audio to that sound bar, but they need an amplifier first, the A1 can do that. And then you can also stream to that A1 in the event that they don't want to always listen to TV audio, they can stream music from their phone right to the A1X. Uh, also built into the A1X is Bluetooth in the event your customer still needs Bluetooth for their product, projects. You can take two of these A1s and put them side by side on a single one U rack shelf, the feet come off. And we're also put keyholes on the bottom of the A1 so you can actually wall mount those right on the uh, any wall and have it uh, be a really easy, you know, quick installation. Um, the A3 is very similar to the A1 in that you have three amplified audio outputs. And we're also giving you, and this is new for the X series, three preamp analog audio outputs. So essentially you can loop into three different amplifiers. Um, if you have multiple endpoints for think uh, 70 volt amplifiers, surround sound processors, um, you can also have the uh, speaker, the amplified zones, as well as the preamp zones slaved together so that they're playing at the same time. And you also are getting three uh, preamp inputs. So you can, you can add three, DC, three CD players, three record players, or you can mix and match to your heart's content. Um, the difference between the A3X and the A1X, obviously on top of form factor, is you cannot use Wi-Fi with the A3X. You have to plug this in directly to your network switch. Uh, you, um, uh, it's still a 1U form factor. You can, you can rack mount. It does come with a rack mount kit. You can also wall mount this as well. There's keyholes on there, so you can mount it right on the wall should you choose. Um, uh, let's see. It does, uh, both A1X and A3X also are ready to support Alexa as soon as we roll that out. Um, Brandon, I've seen your, pri or your question on A3X price. Uh, if you can talk to your Streetwave sales rep, uh, they can get you to take that taken care of. It's, uh, it's pretty easy. You may already have access to it through your, um, through your dealer portal. Uh, as far as retail on the A3X, Brandon, that's going to be um, Trevor. If you can look that up, or Dallin, we can get that to you. We can get retail up here in just a second. A um, couple of things we're at, we've added to the A3X and the A6X is IR control. So uh, you can actually uh, teach the A3 and the A6X IR commands for a single zone. So in the event that you want to, uh, again, use this as a, um, as a, if you want to have a TV remote, be able to control the volume on, a, on an A3X or an A6X, you can do that. It's always been in the A1 series. Um, I got another question from Trevor. Can I plug three different sources into the A1X using all three inputs and I'll have them played on my speaker? Uh, the answer to that is yes, you can. However, uh, you cannot discreetly select those inputs. So you'd have to um, play from whatever source that is and play that into the A1. So if all three are playing at the same time, um, you obviously get a little bit of a, a garbled mess there. But um, if you were able to control those independently, you certainly could plug all three in. So Trevor, good question. Um, the moving on, Brandon, hopefully you see that in, in uh, the chat there. You've got the MSRP from both Dallin and Trevor. Thanks, Chance, for getting that done. The A6X is basically the A3X, but twice the capacity. So you've got six amplified zones. Uh, all uh, Both the A3 and the A6 are rated at 50 watts per channel in both 4 ohm and 8 ohm. I'll mention that the A1, A3, and A6 are all uh, stable at 8 ohms as well as 4 ohms. You can't go any lower than 4 ohms. Um, you'll also notice that I'm mentioning these are matrixable inputs and outputs. So essentially what that means, if you're not familiar with the term matrixable, is essentially through the Vessel app, I can take any of the inputs and make them available on any of the outputs. So for example, if I have a CD player plugged into zone one, I know that's a little old school technology, but bear with me. I can make that available on all six zones at the same time, or even though it's plugged into uh, input one, I can make that available on output number six, uh, which, is a, which is a good uh, feature in the event that you need that kind of switching functionality in your project. Uh, also the A6, obviously it's twice, uh, twice the height, so it's a two U form factor. You can rack mount that, you can put it on a shelf. You cannot wall mount the A6, unlike the A3 and the A1. 
Uh, the A6 also only can be hardwired into your network switch. It does not have Wi-Fi built in. It does not have Bluetooth built in either. The only one that has a wireless Bluetooth and Wi-Fi chipset is the A1X. Can't stress that enough. Just want to make sure everyone that's super, super clear. Um, like the A3 and A6, those are all, this A6 is certified with Apple, Google, Spotify, uh, and we'll soon have Alexa. Also, you'll notice MSRP on the A6X is now in the chat. One thing I'll mention is if you're looking at potentially uh, considering Vessel as a replacement for your Denon Heos product set or your Sonos product set, if you look at Vessel from a retail price per zone, we win. Uh, we are less money for each zone retail price wise. Uh, to your end users than any any of our competitors. We also, if you start looking at the amount of money you can make with Vessel uh, from a margin perspective, we also win. We're putting more money in your pocket while uh, providing a much more elegant and easy to use solution and a much more aggressively priced solution. So definitely, I'd, I'd encourage you to take a minute and run those numbers. Um, if you're familiar with the old A series, uh, A3 and A6, they ran a little warm. Uh, we got some concerns about that. They were by design, designed around a little warm, but we went ahead and uh, upgraded the cooling in the A3 and the A6 substantially. So now they remain cool to the touch, uh, even when they're being run and used 24 hours, seven days a week. So uh, great little products, great little solutions there. Um, let's see, I'll mention automation drivers. So I kind of gave them a little bit of a black eye at the, the very beginning of the presentation. I wanted to just circle back around to that because I actually like automation systems and I don't want that to be the case. I want to make sure that everyone knows that we actually play really nice in the sandbox with automation companies, not all of them, only a select few at the time being. Uh, if you look at your screen, you'll see that there's only three companies, Control4, URC, and Crestron. Uh, those are the current companies that we have drivers for, for the A1X, the A3X, and the A6X. Uh, Control 4 is the one I'm the most familiar with, and Crestron, uh, there we're actually opening up the matrix functionality inside of the Vessel ecosystem. So what that means is if you're a Control 4 dealer and you have an, an audio matrix from somebody else, you can actually replace that with a Vessel series give them all of that wonderful native streaming functionality, but still put control four in the driver's seat so that you can actually um, uh, you can actually have it report back to control four with the uh, with its metadata, what, what zones are actively playing, and then control four can actually cut off an audio stream and override that with uh, whatever the control four command is, is providing. So uh, we have a full knowledge base on all of that, how to implement those, where to access those, please just check out vessel.com. Uh, a couple of questions I'm seeing on the chat. Uh, let's see, how does the Vessel A1X handle issues with spanning tree protocol? Uh, Daniel, I think we've got that pretty much resolved. Our I'd have to defer you out to our tech team. We also have a knowledge base article on that as well on Vessel.com. Um, so I'm, I don't want to speak one way or another. We'll, we'll have to follow up with you probably offline on that. But I think we're good there, unless Trevor Dallin, um, if you know anything specifically on that. Um, as far as the Savant driver in the works, that is something that we are still considering uh, for those Savant uh, integrators out there, you know that it's, they're probably one of the more difficult companies to work with, whereas they want to generally create their drivers themselves. So we're still working on that. Um, it's not something we're ignoring by any means. Uh, we're just trying to see if we can't get that done the most effectively. Um, yeah, but these are good questions. Thank you everybody for participating. Yeah, keep in mind, this is also important to remember. We do work with Control 4 URC Crestron, just not everyone else. Next, I'm excited to be able to introduce our new Vessel products that you'll see going into 2022. So we don't have a hard and fast launch date yet. Our product development team for the longest time was telling us we'd probably see them at the uh, end of Q2, let's say, or excuse me, end of Q1, probably around the March timeframe. Um, the sales team, we've all kind of agreed that at this point in time, based on the updates we're seeing, we'll probably push into Q2. I'm thinking later Q2, but who knows, product team could still pull off a miracle. Obviously, we're going to beat the drum and, and shout this from the mountaintops when these, uh, these products become available because I feel like they'll be very exciting for everybody. And our goal is very much to give Sonos a run for their money. Uh, so on your screen, you should see what is called the SX series. Uh, it is our soundbar, subwoofer, and freestanding speaker that uh, blend effortlessly and natively into the streaming vessel ecosystem that we've just got them talking about. You can mix and match these products with the A1X, the A3X, and the A6X. 
You can stream to these with all the major streaming technologies that we already talked about. Plus, we're giving you some additional features and functionality that we'll cover here right now. Uh, first, the freestanding speaker. So very much designed to be just that, a wireless freestanding speaker, other than you still have to plug it into power. Uh, you can hardwire it in your network switch, but it very much is designed to hang off an access point or your wireless uh, ecosystem. Uh, we have full range drivers built into this. It sounds fantastic. If you compare it against, say, the Sonos Play 1 or any other uh, speaker in the SIM form factor, like the Echo Studio, for example, in the Amazon ecosystem, uh, we sound much better than that product. Plus, we're giving you an easier to use experience for your end users. Uh, it is a Dolby DTS certified product. You'll see where I'm coming with that in that it can be used as wireless surrounds in conjunction with the soundbar and subwoofer. So you can create a 5.1 or 7.1 wirelessly, obviously still will have to plug in the power with the soundbar sub freestanding speaker that you saw on that previous slide. Uh, we do have a Google Voice mic array built into the top of this, so you can actually interface right with the Google Voice Assistant with this without needing a little, uh, a little Google Voice puck anywhere else in the project. Uh, though, even though Google Voice is built in here, it still works with all of the um, voice assistants that we've talked about, so you can use a Siri and have a HomePod mini to drive this uh, if you'd like. Um, it has all the, as I mentioned earlier, AirPlay 2, Chromecast, Spotify Connect and again, can be mixed and matched inside of your vessel ecosystem to your heart's content. Another thing I'll mention is we are providing a universal hole uh, 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 on the bottom of a thread pattern so that you can now take this and use any wall mount solution that perhaps you already like for, for satellite speakers. Um, and then uh, you, can, you can also use our uh, wall mount solution that will be coming later in 2022, as well as we're creating our own uh, towers, uh, kind of tower mounting solution. So you use those wireless surrounds and get them propped up high enough to go over a couch. Uh, our target retail is still a little bit in flux here. Uh, we were, we're gonna try and get as close to the Sonos Play 1 price point as possible. Keep in mind though, that this was designed to outperform that and we have some better technology, better driver uh, quality built into ours. So uh, it's gonna be a little bit of a balancing act of uh, obviously trying to price for quality, but also being aggressive in the marketplace. So uh, hopefully as we get into Q1, we'll be able to share some update, updated pricing there with you. Next is the SX soundbar. This is an LCR soundbar, left, center, right. Uh, you'll notice that we are uh, around $50 retail less than uh, the Sonos competitor. We're gonna try and get that to about $100 less, uh, but that's just kind of tentatively are what our target retail price is. Uh, we are using uh, uh, three BMR drivers as well. Again, those are full range drivers with two passive radiators on the bottom just to help strengthen that low end presence from, a, from an audio perspective. This soundbar sounds fantastic. You'll be very happy with it when you have a chance to get it, get it in your hands and give it a test. Uh, we actually have our, already been taking the SX products out on the road. Uh, we've covered some of the East and, and Central States in the United States um, at the end of this year. And then as we get into next year, we will bring these out into a market near you. So hopefully if you haven't had a chance to listen to these already, uh, you'll, you'll be able to hear them personally firsthand, hopefully before launch. Uh, we are including in the soundbar HDMI eARC. Yeah, I know the slide only says ARC, but we are supporting eARC, which is kind of latest and greatest in eARC. So uh, that'll allow you to do um, obviously full audio pass through back from your smart television to the soundbar. Uh, you can also use your television's uh, remote to control uh, volume on the soundbar as well through that eARC connection. Uh, it has a wireless uh, transmitter that's proprietary to the freestanding speakers and subs. So you can actually, through the Vessel app, go through and set up a, um, a your wireless 5.1 or 7.1 uh, system in your project. Um, in the Vessel app, when it launches with these, uh, you'll actually be able to do room calibration as well. So you'll, once everything's set up, it'll listen to every, the room and the speaker placement, and then um, <clears throat> it'll then uh, get everything calibrated and, and make it sound as good as possible for the particular installation environment that you have. Uh, it, as I mentioned earlier, it wirelessly integrates with the Vessel ecosystem, uh, should you choose. Uh, you can actually mount this to, uh, uh, or you can put it on top of a table and, and have it look just like this. Uh, we also uh, have offset the woofers. That rather than coming straight out of the soundbar, they're at, uh, kind of up and out. What that means is you can take that soundbar and rotate it 90 degrees. So that light bar is facing down and you can actually wall mount that soundbar. So it makes it uh, look really nice up against obviously the, this, all the major flat panel televisions that are out on the market now. And rather than point that audio down, it's still pointing down and out towards your primary listening position. So um, you'll notice also that volume knob um, 
that is actually volume now on the side there. That's so if you need to quickly get up and adjust the volume, you can't find the remote or you don't want to grab your phone, you can do that right from the right from the soundbar. Uh, you can actually hardwire this into your local area network as well. Um, it also has Wi-Fi built into it. This also will include Bluetooth. Uh, it will not have a, a, a mic array built into this for any of the voice assistants. However, it will work with all of the voice assistants as long as it's within the same project. And then finally, the SX subwoofer. We're really excited about this because it is a form factor that doesn't currently exist in the marketplace, generally speaking. Uh, we we, we uh, have uh, created a... A kind of a custom 10 inch honeycomb fiberglass woofer, woofer composite that uh, is really low profile. Uh, this subwoofer, when you see it, actually can slide under pretty much any couch or any bed, kind of get up and out of the way if you want and not have to see it. You just have to plug it in the power. Um, we also are, are, uh, have an optional accessory that you can buy that'll allow you to have the sub in the room and, and you can actually put that up on its side if you choose. Um, it's a great sounding subwoofer, packs plenty of punch. Um, it will be priced less, th less than its competitors. Um, we're also making this so you can partner it with any surround sound processor. We're giving you an LFE input on this in the event that you've got somebody who still wants in ceiling or in wall speakers, but still likes the subwoofer enough where they want to put this in your project. So you don't have to use this with the vessel soundbar and the vessel uh, freestanding speakers. Uh, also, uh, you'll notice it's got a built-in amplifier, so you still have to plug it in the power, also DTS certified. And I will mention this, I don't want it to kind of get lost in the weeds, but you can actually, uh, once you're set up um, in, Google, in the Google Home app only, uh, you can actually add this to uh, Google Cast groups. So essentially you can add a sub to a multi-room or a stereo pair of speakers in another room if you choose. Um, Google is the only one that lets us certify a subwoofer on its own and allow it to exist in a project. Apple and Alexa will not, so it'll only be available within the, the Google Cast streaming uh, architecture. Now, if you have it set up with a soundbar uh, already, you can, once you use AirPlay to stream your music to the soundbar, the subwoofer will also play. It has to be part of a, a, a soundbar in order for that to work. So hopefully that, that stays clear. Um, I think that is it on the SX product. Um, let me go back to questions really quick. Looks like we got the spanning tree uh, taken care of. Um, next question is Josh AI integration. Uh, we are looking at that, uh, Daniel, uh, where we have found that we have a little bit of an issue with uh, Josh AI and it's not anything that either one of us have done. Just Josh AI typically looks to have some sort of an existing media service or uh, something that's actually running that kind of can, uh, once it receives a command from Josh, start an audio stream. The way Vessel was originally intended was so that you start your audio streams right from your end user devices, so tablets, phones, computers, et cetera. So we are looking forward on our product roadmap to potentially add something uh, that will sit on the network that Josh can talk to and have it kick off a stream. Um, I know that, that it's another common question of, I wanna be able to do a macro with a button push with Control 4 or Savant or Crestron and be able to kick off a music stream. So we're looking at things uh, to, to be able to support things like the Josh AI integration and some more enhanced integrations with like Crestron, Control 4, and so on. So uh, more to come on that, Daniel. Uh, let's see, any other questions before we jump over to the quiz? Okay, uh, I think Dallin, that is it. I'm just trying to think, make sure I covered all the questions in the quiz. Did we miss any? I think you got them, um, okay. unless Trevor um, noticed any that you missed. Um, but yeah, appreciate it, Chase. Thanks for, for the time and the presentation. Um, we'll go ahead and jump right into the quiz. I know we're already running up to about an hour and we don't want to keep you guys too long. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen here real quick. All right, can you guys, Chase, can you see my screen? Yep, no Chase. problem. Yep. Yeah, you can see it? Okay. Yep. Awesome. So if, if you guys are, are familiar with, with Kahoot, um, what, what you do is you, you just go to this website here at the top, or if you have the app, you can use the app. You just go to www.kahoot.it, um, and then it'll prompt you to enter in this pin. Uh, I can see some are already joining in as, as well. Um, once you enter in the pin, it'll prompt you to enter in your email address so that we know exactly who you are. Um, and then a name, you can use a, a, your own name or a nickname if you want, uh, but we'll give you guys just a few minutes uh, to, to join. 
Um, just as a refresher, in case anyone joined late, we are giving away a free uh, A1 home, um, as well as two uh, bookshelf speakers, our, our CT4 uh, bookshelf speakers. And we're, we're pretty excited about that. The MSRP value for um, those products altogether is, is just over $1,000. Um, and so it's, it's a, a decent amount of product that we're giving away and, and uh, we're excited uh, to, to give one of you guys a chance to test it out if you haven't already, um, as well as to the, the, the second place and the third place finishers will we'll, uh, provide some free swag as well. So we'll give you guys just a few minutes uh, few to, to join and then we'll go ahead and get started. Dallin, there's one thing I'll mention. I'm just looking through the questions um, that I didn't, I feel like I didn't stress enough. So just, just to be fair to everyone, um, we, uh, you know, we talked about spanning tree protocol earlier. That was a question that came up um, where Vessel is a network based product. Uh, we highly encourage you to look at the, if you're, if you're just brand new to installing Vessel for the first time, uh, check out vessel.com, go to support. You'll see uh, an, a, an article there that's basically networking best tips and practices. Um, there are some things, just common things you do need to, to take a look at, make sure things are enabled appropriately on your network. Um, things like UPnP, Bonjour, uh, Multicast. Um, and there's some the, uh, network brand specific suggestions as well. Before you install Vessel there uh, in any of your projects, we highly encourage you to go check that out and become familiar with those settings. And that way you're not frustrated once you've installed Vessel, that way your customers aren't, aren't frustrated. And again, we try to make sure we're always kind of on the bleeding edge of network updates, firmware updates, new networking equipment that comes out. So we're trying to just make it so your life's a little bit easier. So things like uh, Ubiquity, if you're a Ubiquity fan, that's we've got a bunch of uh, settings on um, uh, for Ubiquity products. We've got Arachnus up there, we've got Aero, we've got Google, uh, Google Home Wi-Fi products. Um, and the list goes on and on. So please make sure you, you take a look at that. Another thing I'll mention is um, this is a question, especially if you've come from old vessel, uh, from the old vessel setup requirements. It used to be that you had to go into the Google Home app to set up vessel every time. Uh, with the X series, we've changed that uh, where you can actually go right into uh, your, um, for example, if you only want to set up Wi Fi or, excuse me, AirPlay. You can actually go your iPhone, go into network settings and set up just um, just AirPlay, for example. You don't ever have to go back into Google Home if you don't want. You don't have to go into the Vessel app if you don't want. Um, the same will apply with Alexa when it launches. But in the event that you want to make uh, everything available to your customers all the time, you'll still need to go into Google Home and set that up. Um, but yeah, so that should, I think that covers pretty much the rest of the quiz question as well. So back to you awesome. now. Yeah, well, thanks, thanks, Chase. And, and also, again, if, if any of you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out to your StreakWave um, contact representative and, and uh, we'll, we'll make sure we get those, those addressed. Um, just a few quick more instructions in terms of, of, the, of the quiz. Um, once I hit start, right, there'll be, um, the question will pop up um, and we'll get started. It'll show up here on the screen as well as on your device, you know, whether you're joining from a computer or, or a phone. Um, and as you, you may know with Kahoot, you're, you're graded both on, um, you know, answering correctly as, as well as uh, how quickly you answer the question. So that's how, how the, the winners are, are determined. Um, and then after each question, we'll also give Chase just, just a, a minute to, in case any additional clarification is, is needed, um, to provide the right answer. Um, and yeah, with that, we'll, we'll go ahead and, and get started. Um, Dallin, before we get started, yeah. I just wanted to address, and I'm sorry if we didn't address it earlier. Um, if you are a staff or an employee of either StreetWave or SoundVision, you cannot participate. This is only for our customers only. So if you are on there, please remove yourself. <laughs> sorry. Well, you're, you're welcome to participate if you'd like, but we'll, yeah, the, the free product will be just going to, to customers. So yeah, thank you for that, that clarification, Angela. Appreciate no it. And then if you are the winner, um, please um, stay on the line so we can make sure we get your correct um, home address or shipping address so we can make sure we get you those items directly to you. Awesome. All right, that's all I got. So take it away. Sounds good, thanks. All right, we'll go ahead and get started. You will have, I think, 30 seconds to answer each question.
All right, two, uh, the correct answer was uh, was false on that one. Chase, anything else you need to add there? Are you good? Yeah, just a quick reminder, the Vessel A1X does not require an Ethernet connection. You can hook that up via Wi-Fi. The A3X and the A6X can only support an Ethernet connection. So that's awesome. it. Thanks. All right, looks like Ludo's in, in first place. We'll go ahead and get go to the next question here. So vessel amplifiers require high-speed internet, internet to function properly. And just a quick note, yeah, if any of the StreakWave um, employees started the quiz, you can, it'd probably be better just to go ahead and answer as well after each one. Um, we'll just void your answers. <laughs> All right, uh, true was correct here. So best amplifiers do require high speed internet to function properly. So as, as Chase mentioned, not all um, uh, require, uh, or the A1X is the only one that it's Wi-Fi or wireless uh, option, but all of them require at least to be, or, or need at least to be hard hardwired um, if there's not a, a wireless option. Anything else, Chase? Nope. Okay. Tim is taking the lead. All right, on to number three, vessel amplifiers can be installed right out of the box without having to inspect or make changes to a customer's network. All right, Chase, anything else to add here? Nope. Okay. Well, I will, I will mention that we do with, we do recommend that every single time you're there that you're inspecting a customer's network. Um, you want to make sure that, you know, even, even if it's a network that you've installed or adjusted once before, before you install Vessel, it's always good to go through and make sure uh, everything's set up pursuant to the knowledge base. Once you've done it a handful of times, you'll know it's a pretty straight deal and it just becomes second nature to go in and check that network. So. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, the products, right, can be, can be set up essentially out of the box, um, but it's always a good idea to go ahead and inspect it and, and make sure, because uh, there are some challenges sometimes with the network, if someone's uh, network isn't set up properly or correctly. Um, and, and so that's why this one's a little bit of a tricky or a trick question. Um, the answer is, is false. You do need to, to make sure you inspect the, the customer's network would always be our recommendation. All right, Brandon takes the lead and we're on to number four. How many zones can you add to a network? Correct answer was as many as the internet uh, bandwidth allows. Anything else, Chase? Nope. Okay. Brandon's still in the lead on the question five. How can wireless, how, um, or you can wirelessly send inputs from one vessel unit to another vessel unit? This is one I did not, I did not touch on. So we see interesting stuff, really does. I apologize. All right, Chase, go ahead and expand on this one. Yeah, that and this is this is my bad. So if this ends up causing somebody to lose the deal, I, I apologize. Figure out a way to make it right. But um, so this is a limitation within the vessel ecosystem. It's a question we get probably every day, and, and my best answer is, is we are working on it. Uh, we know that it is a limitation within vessel. Uh, essentially, what we're trying to put forward here is is that we get a lot of questions where you know the vessel A1X, for example, has all those inputs. Would it be possible to take an input that I put in the back of an A1X and make it available on an A1X somewhere else in the project or an A6X or an A3X. Um, unfortunately, that answer is no and has been for a little while. Um, it's, it's a limitation within our firmware and, and honestly, it's a limitation within some of the patents that are out there right now by other streaming music companies. Uh, we have, it looks like, found a way around that and just a matter of us getting our firmware up to date 
with that. So as you as we get into 2022, our hope is by middle end of next year, you'll see that uh, become available as a feature supported across all vessel products. So um, no, we're working on it. No, we know that it is a, something that we, uh, is, is a little bit of a weakness in the vessel ecosystem. Um, but there are some ways around that as well. We can hardwire things and use priority input switching, which you can do through the vessel app to kind of overcome some of those obstacles. So um, we'd love to for an opportunity to talk through whatever project that you have where you feel like you need to wirelessly send inputs. Um, our design team can get involved and often provide a solution around that. So yep. the answer to that is false. We cannot send from one vessel to another vessel unit yet. And wirelessly is, is the, the keyword here, right? And, and, and just to provide one other point of clarification. So with if you have an A6X, for example, or an A3X, um, any input that you, you put on that um, on one zone can be made available on the other zones that are, uh, you know, that are wired, right, through the A3X or the A6X, but it's the wireless option um, that, that is not available yet. All right. MD is taking the lead and on the number six, all vessel amplifiers are stable down to how many ohms? And Chase, you did cover this one. I, I, I did hear this one. Four ohms is correct. Okay, I think we can jump on to the next one. Yeah, Chase? Okay. MD. Which Google features can be used with vessel amplifiers? Correct answers all of the above. Any other notes, Chase? No, sir. Okay. Brandon take, retakes the lead and we're on to question number eight. So there's two more, there's uh, we have 10 questions. So a couple more. is all of the above and you good chase yep yep okay all right nine true or false the, ve the vessel mobile app is required to set up your device and stream music Correct answer is, is false here. Um, looks like most answered true. Any any clarification you want to add here, Chase? Yeah, uh, happy to. And this was a little bit of a trick question. That's why I wanted to circle back around and, and, and mention what I did at the very beginning. So um, it used to be, well, it never has been required officially to use the Vessel app. And really, you don't even have to introduce your end users to the Vessel app for really any purpose. Um, if you wanted to just get a Vessel, box, a vessel unit after, out of the box, plug it in after you've adjusted your customer's network, and go right to Google Home and set that up, you could. Uh, you could also go right to your AirPlay settings and your network settings on your iOS device and never really touch the Vessel app if you don't want. Uh, we have a lot of users that are just so familiar with it, they just skip all the processes and, and go right to, uh, for example, an AirPlay setup through the network settings on their phone. So um, I will mention though, the Vessel app there is, you're welcome to set up through the Vessel app. Uh, the, we've made some changes there and we'll continue to make changes uh, to kind of help streamline that along and, and make, especially if you've got new technicians, for example, that you've hired, you want them to kind of walk through that step by step. The Vessel app is a great tool for them where we've got some videos in there. We've got some things that say, hey, make sure you check your network, check your network. And if you go through the setup through the Vessel app, it will walk you through Google Home, uh, Amazon, as well as AirPlay when Amazon launches. Uh, but technically, you don't ever have to use it. You can, you can bypass it. So back to you, Dale. Okay, sounds good. We're on to the final question here. Um, looks like Joe is, is taking the lead coming into the final question. Fast, Joe. Yeah. 
Vessel is compatible with all control systems. True or false? Correct answer is false. That's right. As, as Chase mentioned, we, uh, there's three URC, Control 4, and Crestron, correct? Yep. Okay. All right. Rand has taken uh, third place. So, Rand, we'll get you some swag as well as Jamie. We'll make sure we get some swag as well. And our winner is Joe. <laughs> All right, congratulations, Joe. Um, as, as Angel mentioned, um, please hang on uh, for just a couple minutes uh, after, um, and, uh, and and we'll make sure we just have all of your contact information. I think we should have your email uh, when you registered. Um, but again, we appreciate all of you joining, especially hanging on for a, little, a few minutes after uh, to participate. Uh, we're uh, grateful for your time, and and again, if you have any other questions, please uh, follow up with with your Streakwave representative, or or feel free to re reach out to us directly. With that, we'll let you guys go. Thanks. Thanks, everybody.